Well, hello everyone, I'm back to my home, and I've decided to make a short video about my Imperial Russian uniform. By no means this impression is complete, because I still need to get the proper shovel cover along with the shovel, the bashlik, and the sapogi, which are the jack boots. I'm currently wearing sapogi, but they're not exactly the correct ones, so I'll get into that later. This impression is for a 1914-1915 impression, mostly because of the uniform that I'm wearing is kind of early wool, wool uniform. Later on the war they would be issued, you know, much cheaper to produce cotton uniforms, which, you know, starts to become more common as the war starts to go on. So, without further ado, let's get started. On my head I'm wearing the Russian Imperial Army uh, Furashka which is the typical headwear you see in the Imperial Russian Army. It is made out of, uh, just like the uniform, made out of uh, pea, wolf, uh, pea green wool uh, fabric and with, leather, with a leather visor, which is actually painted green, which is interesting for, you know, uniformity, I guess it was done. The cap also has a cap badge, or a cockade, uh, which has the Romanov family colors and the imperial crest type of thing, which is in the hobby we tend to joke around saying it the eye sometimes. Oh yeah, and obviously that's pretty much it. It's just a peak gap. Uh, going down, obviously I have the 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 the, the gimnastorka, which is the Russian uniform shirt tunic along with straight legged trousers which currently you can't see, sadly, but obviously you can imagine. The equipment that I'm wearing is consists of a backpack, my uh, leather belt along with the ammunition pouches for the Mosin Nagant rifle, my canteen, and the thing you can't see, my bandolier underneath my schnell, a biscuit here, and my missing shovel carrier and shovel. Obviously, um, the equipment would change throughout the war as leather shortages became more apparent. The soldiers would have been issued with canvas pouches, canvas economy ca pouches, which I might actually try to reproduce one day if I ever get into later war periods or reenacting. One thing that I should note and note about my canteen is that it's actually not an imperial russian canteen it's a modified czechoslovakian canteen that needs to be replaced the cover for it is all right for imperial russian reenacting because it's a, obviously a replica <sighs> so obviously i would like to show you guys the schnell but many of you know about it will probably know that it's extremely difficult to roll the first time and I've, even though I've been practicing, it is quite difficult. So in a later video, I will be demonstrating it. The uniform, for its details, I must say that it also has shoulder boards, which I have actually sewn onto the uniform. Normally, they would have slip-on shoulder boards. However, I've also seen soldiers stitching uh, shoulder boards onto their uniforms. And personally, I quite like the look of it. And I did that, which with my custom shoulder boards. I also have the, as you can see here, the brass buttons for the shoulder boards, which has the Imperial Eagle on them. The uniform buttons had to be replaced when I bought them, because obviously most reproduction sellers don't actually make them in wood or uh, bone. So I put wood buttons on them. As you can see, the uniform is quite simplistic. Uh, the main reason for that was obviously because of the size of the Imperial Russian Army. And it's quite easier to supply simplistic uniforms, still good looking, mind you, uniforms, for your men if you have a couple million of them on the ready at times. So that's the main reason you tend to see Russian uniforms being you know, simplistic is usually because of the man sheer manpower that is required to be equipped. So, going back to the things that I don't have, 
Obviously, sadly, I am wearing my German jack boots to just show you. I mean, some people might tell you that you can wear, I've seen some great actors doing it, short jack boots like these. But Russian sapogi are actually knee high, so they're a couple inches short and they're not actually correct. That is why currently I'm looking for a cheaper alternative rather than buying it from Russia because Oh boy, it's actually easier to get it made in Turkey and far cheaper. An exact replica here, I must say, compared to Russia. Obviously, with the with the shovel as well, you would have a leather cover for it, along with the Imperial Russian shovel. There aren't anyone who makes a repro shovel, so I am on the lookout for an original one, but they tend to be quite expensive. So Aside from that, obviously, I was talking about the papaka, which I have here, which is the winter cap. But when it gets really cold, you're all supposed to be given out, you're supposed to wear the bashlik, which is kind of like the Ottoman Nvidia cap, which is supposed to go over this thing, and it would have ear flaps on, and you wrap it around like a scarf. Which, sadly, I don't have, so I'm unable to show it to you guys. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much it for the Imperial Russian uniform. Um, obviously you would see differences that I need to tell you about in the uniforms, which are the inclusion of chest pockets in certain uniforms, where soldiers would cut down, which what I actually did to my gymnastorka, cut down the uniform just a bit to make flaps for pockets because the tunic itself, or the jacket, or the shirt, you might call it, doesn't actually have any pockets. The only pockets you have are on your trousers. And even though they're quite large, you know, you still need, obviously gonna need some extra stuff to put into your pockets all the time. So yeah, this is pretty much it. I know it's generally a shorter video compared to most of the, the stuff I did, but I'll probably make a part two, which is going to be, you know, focusing more or more or less on the same stuff, but more on the Schnell and even maybe a tutorial on how to roll the thing. But obviously I'm no master on it, so I don't know. I, I don't think I should be making a video on how to roll it, but obviously when I get better at it, I might do that. Well. Thank you for watching and see you guys on the next video soon, I hope.